So when you were um, at that point where maybe you were sort of like, hey, I might need help, you know, mm-hmm. I might need help outside of myself, you know, for, for those that are listening, maybe walk through that, that process in your mind. What was it, was it sort of, I'm going to go to therapy. Was there thoughts around, do I need to, do I not need to like, what, what was your experience leading to that? Um, I feel like, um, I knew there was some unfinished work in terms of like, I felt like it was hard to talk to people about transitioning because I feel like as athletes, like you're taught to be tough. And I also felt like it was kind of a stupid problem to have that. Like, I mean, there was an entire pandemic going on, uh, that like people have real problems and here I am like grieving my career or like, I like, you know, grieving this thing that I had in my life. That's not there anymore. That was giving me a lot that I needed. And yeah. now I don't have it. And on top of it, I'm, you know, stuck in my apartment in Chicago, starting a job where I've never met anybody right. in person. Right. And um, so I feel like that was a big thing. Um, I also had a really hard time admitting to myself that like, um, you know, this is unfortunately common with a lot of women in sport that, you know, your relationship with food and fueling that you know, your body image that there was work I needed to do there. Um, and that like, it was still impacting me, even though I wasn't competitively running anymore. And so I kind of, between those two things, like I finally decided that like, I, I just wanted somebody to talk to that, like, um, you know, really had like experience in the area and that, um, you know, was completely neutral, um, and that I didn't have to feel bad about for talking to. Yeah. It's so interesting too the, the um the piece you said about neutral because you know so much of being an athlete and going through those experiences it's it's just you're always getting opinions you're you're always kind of everyone has got an agenda and I don't mean that in in a negative way an agenda can be a a, a positive thing but a lot of times like what you're experiencing through, you know, being a competitive athlete is, you know, uh, someone who's got, you know, a coach, right? Like they care about you, but it's also about performance. It's also about, Mm -hmm. you know, how, you know, they're growing the team and, and how they're, you know, uh, you know, competing and, and, and all that other stuff and what success looks like. And so to be able to sit down with someone who is so out of that, world in some cases, you know, and Mm -hmm. just be able to, to really provide that perspective that is, is it's, it's, it's new, it's, it's different. And I think that's, you know, for, for any athletes who are transitioning, listening, it's, I think that can be a powerful thing. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, even if you have like the best support system in the world, um, having someone who doesn't, you know, hasn't gone through all these things with you and kind of knew you as an athlete. Um, you're right. It does provide an entirely different perspective. I mean, obviously like my parents, you know, had been through the whole journey on me with me. I, um, I met my fiance in college, like he, you know, he, and he is a runner too. So like, he kind of, he knew it, he understood it. Um, I, I kind of needed someone who didn't know anything about running. (laughs) Yeah. Um, yeah. and even though they were very, you know, extremely supportive too, like you sometimes like you feel bad, um, you know, kind of unloading all of this. Mm. Tell me more about that. Um, you know, just that, like, uh, it, and again, like, it's nothing, you know, like I would say like the people who I relied on, like did an amazing job listening and were super supportive. Um, but like I, I needed a different perspective. And I also like, like I said, like, I felt bad complaining about this a year after I graduated. Um, yeah. You know, it's, you feel like you should be, yeah. Uh, yeah, I felt like I should be over it at that point. Um, yeah. But again, like I hadn't, because I had never really grieved in the first place and I had shoved all my feelings down. Right. 
uh, it, it was still waiting for me. I still had work to do. 